Welcome to Of Sound Mind and Spirit. I'm Shelley. And I'm Lisa. We're sisters walking together on a journey of faith. We're not perfect. And we definitely don't have all the answers. We're inviting you to walk with us as we explore ways we can better know and grow in our faith together. together. Welcome back to another episode from Of Sound Mind and Spirit. I am Lisa. And I am Shelly. And we are recording this at the beginning of October, which is commonly known or thought of as Respect Life Month. And so today we're going to talk about um, the di- honoring the dignity of life of specifically the elderly and the infirm. And it's an important topic and it's uh, very personal to us. Uh, and this is something that we've talked about in the past and we've written about. And so we just think it's important you know, to, to bring it up again. And, and, and I'm not even sure why specifically I find myself in this reflective state about, um, our, well, I do, I do actually know about, (laughs) say about our grandmother. Um, Mm -hmm. but she passed away 10 years ago from, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's. And so a lot of what we're going to be discussing is things that we learned and saw modeled for us while she was um, in in those last final years, um, you know, suffering with her disease. What do you think, Lisa? It was about five years that she really suffered with the dementia. Um, I was trying to remember that the other day, how long she had dementia before she passed. We first really, really, really noticed it, all of us as a family, in uh, late 2004. Your writings about her start in 2009, and it appears that's when the transition from knowing us to not knowing us had just taken place. So that gives her four years of not knowing us. I think this topic is very um, relatable to many people because there's a huge increase that you know you're seeing across population. And I'm not gonna, I'm not a doctor. I'm not gonna get into the possible whys or whatever. It's just that I know so many people that are affected by this and not just dementia, but um, lots of ailments and illnesses. Yeah. Lisa, what do you think about starting by just talking a little bit about granny? We'll just say granny. Which part? You want me to start? <laughs> yeah. We've mentioned our granny before when we talked about Mary. She was completely full of life. I have... As I, as I reflect back on her, I don't think I've met a more selfless person. I can't remember her ever truly getting angry or yelling or raising her voice. Gosh, I wish I'd inherited that. <laughs> but she was full of smiles and caring and love and enthusiasm. And, and everyone really loved her and mm-hmm. everyone knew her. And I see a lot of her in our mom, although I, I have heard my mom raise her, our mom raise her voice. So it's <laughs> <laughs> only at you, never at me. No, I'm just kidding. Of course not. No. Uh, Granny used to hum <laughs> and sing. And, and I did inherit that. <laughs> yeah. As she moved around. And something that I always found so fascinating was her love of sports. I mean, oh my she gosh. loved sports. She knew all the stats, especially baseball. And some football, of course. And um, she just, she watched it constantly. And I'll uh, I'll give you an example, Lisa. uh I visited her once and she was in that back bedroom watching a baseball game. And in her right hand, she held a little old radio, like a transistor Mm -hmm, radio. And she had that up to her ear. Not only could she tell you the score for the game she was watching, she could tell you the score for the game she was listening to. And beyond that, she could tell you what each player had done, what their stats were for <laughs> both, all four teams, both games. It was, it was the most amazing display of, of uh, what's the word, acumen, <laughs> baseball IQ. She knew. She loved to play the game. I don't even think I'd known that until mm-hmm. uh, we found photos of her with a bat and a ball. Mm-hmm. She played with a, a church youth group. Yeah, so. I didn't know that either. And she worked in a middle school for a long time and mm-hmm. as the uh, attendance lady. And we uh, went a, a few times that I remember 
oh, we got dropped off over there. Pugs, we were spending the weekend with her and uh, got to meet her students and they just loved her to death. So when we talk about granny and when we talk about this particular topic, we wish, we want you to know that this is a vibrant, wonderful, joyful person. And uh, that's why I think it's so important to both of us that we talk about how we treat each other with dignity and respect mm -hmm. always at every stage of life. It's funny because we first started talking about uh, doing this episode. Uh, Shelly, you, you wanted to call it like the dignity of dying. And you suggested immediately, no, it's about dignity of life. I was thinking how we treat people with, with dignity as they are suffering before their death mm -hmm. because granny, in a way, she died twice. Um, first, the Alzheimer's robbed her of her personality. And I think that was harder than the physical passing because the person we knew and loved was no longer visible and able to interact with us. The reason I really wanted us to focus on the dignity of life is because I think our culture shifts to, you know, you know that ending is coming. And we are really firmly called to honor and see each person and the value they bring, even when she could no longer talk or remember who anybody was or, you know, all those things, there was still an inherent dignity because she was created in the image and likeness of God. We all are children of God. And so that's, that's kind of the, to me, just the overarching message that we all have inherent dignity, no matter what stage you're at, if you're ill, if you're elderly, if you're, you know, all those different things. And I think um, especially important as this conversation is a lot of us in our age range. I mean, this was our grandmother, you know, and she passed 10 years ago. But the age that we are with our friends and, and this midlife place is that we're approaching these conversations, these encountering these issues now with parents. Okay. You're going to make mom cry just talking like that. I know, so, I know. But I want to say too, that if we're talking about how mom and dad modeled for us, how we in turn will have the opportunity to model for our children, which mm -hmm. will again, kind of dictate how they are going to handle and manage us. Well, and I will say that we, we received a wonderful gift in granny's suffering. And that gift was, okay, it's going to be hard. Hang on. <laughs> and I'm right there with you because I know where you're going with this one. <laughs> that gift was our mother and those around us having the opportunity to, to love and serve her. And to yes. live out their faith by living the works of mercy in yes. caring for her. And that is a gift. It's, it's, it is honestly a gift for the rest of us. And I, I've written about this because it wasn't just what we talk about our faith. It was watching people put it into action for real. And when it was, when it was hard. You know, it's, it's, I hate to say, it's kind of easy to be a Christian when things are really going well, but when, <laughs> when things don't go well, that's, we don't, we don't always know how to handle when things don't go well. Right. So you, you mentioned the, the works of mercy. And so I just wanted to remind our listeners what that is. Um, we call these the corporal works of mercy, which the, the works of mercy we do for the physical. Sometimes when I read these, I think of them too literally. And when I think about what we're talking about, it's every single day to every person we know. And that's feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, shelter the homeless, visit the sick, visit the imprisoned, 
and bury the dead and give alms to the poor. And I know some listener might be thinking, well, hang on, visit the prisoners. That's not something you do every day, you know, with everyone in your family or with everyone in your neighborhood, or that's not something you think of. But we witnessed that with Granny because her disease imprisoned her, that she was no longer able to uh, be present mentally, but she was still alive in her body. And she physically couldn't go anywhere. I mean, you, you think about the imprisoned, it doesn't have to be bars, you know? Right. There are lots of people yeah. through illness who are imprisoned. And, mm -hmm. and hers started as a, her imprisonment started mentally, like you said. I'm sorry, you talking and I just remember her <laughs> giggling. Do you remember when <laughs> she used to just giggle, the kids would come in and she'd just yeah, giggle? Yeah. She was just so tickled pink that people would visit. I, you yeah. know, it's funny because I remember, um, you know, she didn't always know who we were and she would not want to give it away, but she nope. didn't know. <laughs> and so it was kind of, it was kind of funny sometimes the, the kind of roundabout conversations that happened. And, um, and it, it, it she always, she always knew who mom was. I Me, mean, mom was the, the constant that she'd recognized, but for the rest of us, but she knew we were there to see her. Yes. Like you come through the door and she knew like, oh, they're here to see me, but I, I don't know who you are, but, um, but she did, would get did excited. Did she ever call you mom? Way. Did she ever I call you remember. by mom's name? No, she I don't. called me by mom's name all the time. Sometimes I just agree with her. And sometimes I just say, no, I'm her daughter, your granddaughter. Yeah. And she just giggled like that was the silliest thing she'd ever heard. <laughs> no. So one of the things um, that our, our our mother and our father, they modeled for us in um, taking care of, care of granny and, and I'll say our dad took care of his mother too, was um, how they loved and cared. So, so it would be going out of your way and making it a priority to be there and mm -hmm. not just like swing by once a week or whatever, but like they were there. They were there all the time. Um, our mother would, cause she couldn't, she did not live with us. She, she lived, um, at a local place here. And it was funny cause I mean, mom knew everybody there, all of the residents. She said hi to all of them. She knew their families, you know, she just really made it, um, it part of the community, you know, she became part of their community. Um, and we would all go up for, she would bring all the grandkids, you know, for the Easter thing and the Christmas, I mean, not Christmas, the uh, Thanksgiving thing and the Halloween party. But yeah. And whenever she had the, whenever she had the kids, whenever she was, um, keeping them for us, she would always take them over there. Cause let me tell you, if you haven't been in a, it's either a hospital or, um, you know, long-term rehabilitation, any of those kind of places. The moment you take kids in there, oh my gosh, you think it's Christmas. Like everybody lights up and they're just so excited. And all of the goofiness that kids do, like jumping around and dancing, they all just loved it. They loved it. Singing songs, playing oh, the yeah. piano. Do you remember going at Christmas to visit our great grandmother and um, dad's grandmother? And we'd have to play the piano or sing a song or do a little dance. We, <laughs> yes. we definitely entertained everybody there. But we were a big group too. I mean, so. yeah, yeah. We, we were, were a lot group. of us cousins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And another thing that um, mom did really, really well and modeled that I, I don't know if I would have thought about before. I, I don't know if I'd really thought about much of this before was her attention and care that she paid to the caregivers, to oh, the workers 100%. there at the facility. She knew their names. She knew their stories. She said hi to them. She rec you know, recognized their shifts, things like that. So I found, I, I, you know, at first I didn't really understand or think about why, you know, why she was doing it, but she really just treated them with great respect and care because they were giving her mother, you know, great care respect and, and care. Yes. What I found unique about that was mom showed them that she saw them. Mm -hmm. She saw them and they knew that she valued them and the work that they did. 
she didn't look at them in any kind of a way that might be off-putting or um, dismissive. If, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. All of them. And like you said, I love that she knew all their names. And she, she knew did. their shifts. <laughs> she knew when they would be there. Mm -hmm. And they knew that she was going to ask them questions about Granny and what kind of mood she was in or what kind of um, – attitude was, was what you know was it a good day mm -hmm. or a bad day and they had a mutual respect for one another as people yeah and she they knew she would listen to them because i remember mm -hmm. you know they would talk to her about how things had, were going and i remember them making suggestions on things that mom should bring up to the doctor you know, oh, that's right. Like a recommendation of, you know, certain things that maybe she should ask the doctor about. And, and so that's, it, it, that was so very important. And uh, those last few days when, when, before granny died, when they, when we were all there, you know, constantly, so many of them, even the ones who didn't work there anymore or weren't on shift came by to say goodbye. Yes. Yes, they did. And I was I was actually there that morning. Um, Mom had stayed overnight. And she sent us a text very early in the morning that says she's still here. Um, so I immediately jumped out of bed and grabbed some kolaches and ran up there. We never ate those kolaches. So. <laughs> um, and so we were we were there together. And one of the ladies, I wish I could remember her name. Um, she came in and asked if she could pray over Granny in her own faith, in her own language, because English was not her first language. And Mother and I both said, of course, absolutely, whatever, you know. And she did. And she told us afterwards that it was a prayer to basically tell the soul it was okay to leave the body, that we would be okay. And... And Granny passed, like, within an hour of that. Um, and it was just very special. And all of the ladies who were working that day, they came. They made us they made us cookies. And so the smell of chocolate chip cookies filled that whole memory care unit. And they brought us a, uh, like a, tr like a, a tea cart with coffee and tea and cookies while we waited for all of the necessities of what to do and all the procedural things to, to happen and take place, everybody to arrive. Um, and they went in and they insisted on putting makeup on Granny and uh, making her a little more presentable. And it was, it was done with such love though, Lisa. It was It just showed how much they cared for her. Mm -hmm. And I would pray that everybody in this whole world would have an opportunity to be loved and cared for through those final stages of life. I think that one of the things we're, we're talking about is that this idea in our society and culture that suffering is bad that we don't nobody wants to suffer and that i agree we don't want to suffer but we do and that it's something to be avoided or looked down upon or hidden away and one of the huge takeaways that i think we're mentioning here is that her suffering through this illness was such an opportunity and gift for others that there really is something in it um and i was reading earlier and i can't remember what saint it was that said this but they were saying jesus suffered he himself suffered so why wouldn't we mm. you know and so rather than avoid it well, I mean, you know, or hide it away or act like it doesn't happen. We we still need to see the person 
in there that is suffering and see Jesus. I mean, look to them as your, you know, what is it? You know, like whatever you do for the least of me, right? least of these, right? Um, you see his suffering in your loved one and still honor them, care for them, love them because it's difficult for everyone, for the caregivers, for the person. But we, we just, we have to continually see the face of Jesus in our loved ones and in the elderly and infirm and treat them just as we would if Jesus was in front of us suffering. Lisa, you, um, when we were talking about doing this particular episode, you had a beautiful, I don't know if it was a quote or a statement, it is a concept about St. Therese of Lisieux and her father, St. Louis Martin. And you told me, and I did not know this, that he had suffered dementia before his death. Mm -hmm. And do you remember what it was? Because I, I think it was something like the idea that he had suffered his his purgatory on earth while he had dementia. And therefore, mm -hmm. his soul did not need to be refined further before entering heaven. Yeah, it was something that St. Therese wrote about that she asked God for a a sign that her father had had um, gone straight to heaven because due to his suffering, his suffering on earth, you know, cleansed him and prepared him for heaven. And um, ever I, re I read that, I don't know when, but ever since I read that, I just thought, again, what a beautiful notion that this suffering on earth is not without its um, merits. Yeah, rewards, merits, um, that there's real grace in it. And, uh, and, and her father now, I mean, now he and his wife, uh, Louis Martin and his wife, Zelie are both, um, named saints in the church. Um, but he is one of his, uh, causes patron saint of mental illness. Um, as a Saint Divna, she is also the patron saint of mental illness. And, um, yeah, I just, I just, I don't know. I'd not thought of it that way, that, that end of life suffering, um, you know, prepares you that, that, mm -hmm. that, that might, you know, have a, have a real purpose. I think that's one of the beautiful things too, about our faith, Lisa, is that we know we shall see our loved ones again. We know that she is without suffering. She is restored to her family in heaven. And we are the ones that grieve because we miss her and we love her. But we have this hope of heaven and that we know we will be able to, to follow Jesus with Mary leading us there at the hour of our death. Mm -hmm. I love that. And you know what? I just I just remembered. November is the month where we remember the deceased in the church. Hmm. So if you think about it, this is October is um, respect life, and November is uh, the month that you recognize and pray for all those who have gone before us. So they kind of work hand in hand if you think about it, right? And uh, I know at our parish, they put out a big book in the narthex when we walk in and you can write the names of your loved ones in there. Mm -hmm. And then all the names in the book, they're prayed for as a whole mm -hmm. um, at every mass. Well, and also they've done since the beginning of our parish is we're invited to bring pictures of our deceased family members. I love seeing the faces. I love seeing um, to be at mass and praying for, um, when you, especially in the prayers of the faithful, when you're praying for the deceased and to be able to look up and look directly at these pictures on the, the sides and stuff of the people who have, um, who we're praying for. Yeah, that is so a really powerful. beautiful tradition that 
we have the ability to put the pictures in those big, deep window recessed areas. Our, our parish is still new. We don't have, we haven't bought all the statues for all the niches. So right now they, they hold flowers and uh, pictures. And they have saints. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Future saints, current saints, I guess. I don't know how you, how you say it, um, but I know granny is a saint. So, cause I know she's in heaven. What a joyful reunion that must be. When we um, release this one, one of the things I want to do is share some of the pictures from the uh, Halloween parties because the Halloween <laughs> parties, I know it's so silly, but she, she always had the biggest smile and they had the most fun. They had some really wonderful people who worked there and they put on these music and they, she didn't dress up because, but you know, they, they would dress up and interact and we would go up there and she would just sit there and smile and laugh and, and just enjoy it all. And I remember someone asked me once, um, you know, she doesn't know who you are. And within a few minutes, probably of you leaving, she's not going to remember you were there. And it's kind of like, I don't want to say, why do you spend the time or, you know, what, you know, like, you mm -hmm. know, does it matter? I guess is what they were asking me, you know? And, and I just, I deeply feel that it matters. So the benefits that she received and, and the other people in her, in her, um, memory care unit, the, the benefits that they received, whether they remember it or not, um, are real, right? And yes, they deserve, they deserve our attention and, um, being treated with dignity, no matter if they remember us or they remember our visits or anything else. It's just, it was the idea of, um, you know, we're there to see her and honor her and take care of her. Even if, I mean, she, you think of it the reverse, like all that she did taking care of us when we were young. Right. Mm -hmm. And we used to, we used to go stay over there. And, um, that was the only time I remember her yelling at me, by the way, was, <laughs> Um, I wouldn't go to sleep <laughs> and our, you know, grandpa, our grandpa used to work a uh, night shift. And so he, um, I don't know why he, he, I guess he was there or she wanted to go to, I don't know. We were, we were bouncing up and down and, um, he, we would not go to sleep. And so mm. she, she came in and wagged her finger at me a little bit and told me <laughs> I was on the sleeper sofa in the living room, told me to go to sleep. <laughs> so but that was the only time. I don't think that really counts. <laughs> that, that's just disciplining. So. Disciplining, yes, yes. But I can't have I, vermicelli noodles without thinking about her putting them, you know, the noodles with the butter, remember? Oh, yeah. Butter noodles yeah. and cold M&Ms right out of the fridge or the freezer in a in a recycled butter dish. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then and she, she, always had a picture of, she always had a picture of um, ice water in the fridge. She always kept water in the fridge to make it extra mm -hmm. cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. Yep. Coloring books, Jack's. Uh, she would take us to, what was that grocery? What was that? It was like a pharmacy. It wasn't Walgreens, but it was a pharmacy that had an old lunch counter and uh, we could pick out a coloring book uh, and I the just, cigar okay, box I, full of crayons. Yes. And I remember that she, whenever we'd go stay there, she would let us go pick out um, a cereal because mom and dad didn't let us have like sugar cereals and she would let us pick out a sugar cereal when we, when we stayed there. And mom, if you're listening, we totally did not eat that. We did not eat We sugar told her, no, ever. you must make us bacon and eggs and toast. No, Whole we're going to eat that, you know, <laughs> regular Cheerios and grape nuts and whatever we ate. <laughs> oh. My memory, my strongest memory of spending the night at her house is actually when I was in college and her resident, their house was my permanent residence to stay in Texas. And because y'all had moved to Oklahoma. Yes, we moved. But uh, when I would spend the night there, every morning I would wake up to the smell of bacon frying and coffee percolating. They, I don't think they ever had a drip coffee maker. It was always percolating on a stove. And... Um, and it would be about 5.30 or 6 in the morning that she'd be doing that. So. 
And Lisa, one of the greatest gifts I think I had in being able to move to this side of town was that for about nine or 10 months, I dedicated every Sunday after church to going and visiting both Granny and Murr because they were in the same facility at the time. And I could go and visit one for a little while and then go down the hall and visit the other for a little while. And no matter how long or brief I stayed, our other grandmother always accused me of not staying long enough. (laughs) (laughs) And I still had the groceries and everything else to do. I always felt guilty leaving, but at the same time, and I, I always brought the kids. It's funny, you mentioned about, um, you know, the great cloud of witnesses and being able to um, ask for, for prayers or knowing that our loved ones are saints. And it was funny because uh, I had not terribly thought of um, really praying to Granny and asking for her intercession. You know, you think of praying to named saints, but I don't always remember that I can pray and ask my loved ones, just like if they were here on earth, I would ask them to pray for me that, you know, we believe that they're part of that cloud of witnesses and that we can ask them to pray for us. It was funny because I was talking to my youngest, this was years ago, and I I can't remember how old she was. And she's like, oh yeah, I, I pray to granny and ask for her help and ask for her, you know, to pray to pray for me. And I just, oh my gosh, I, you know, I thought mm-hmm. that was, yeah, kids And kids a child get it. shall lead them. Yeah, kids get it. I love it. All right. So. Uh, we don't have a big takeaway challenge this week um, that's not really, you know, um, in line with this episode. But I was thinking, Shelly, that instead we just ask for um, everyone to – spend some time and pray for the elderly and infirm Mm -hmm. and to pray for the caregivers. And Lisa, if it's not too bold, I'd even suggest that you pray about how you can serve or do those corporal works of mercy uh, for elderly or infirm in your area. Maybe go and visit a nursing home or a care facility or volunteer or there are so many guests that don't have visitors. And mm-hmm. so maybe you've got a gift or a talent and might feel called to go and serve in some way. Well, <laughs> shall we remind people where they can find us? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank, thank you. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you to our listeners. I want to say thank you for um, listening and and. and I feel like this um, episode was partially indulgent on our part because it was so much of our reflections and talking about our um, grandmother and the the modeling. And I know not everybody um, maybe can relate to what we've experienced, but I hope there's some takeaway for everybody. And I'm I, I thank you for listening. As a reminder, we release new episodes on Thursday, so we hope you'll be back next week on Thursday. Um, and if, if, if you're new to us, go back and listen to previous episodes, uh, because we try to cover, uh, a, a, a variety, small variety of topics, um, week to week. As always, we ask that you subscribe, um, come find us on our website, soundmindandspirit.com. And at the very bottom of the page, there is a, um, you can subscribe to our email newsletter to keep up with what's going on with us and, uh, you know, where, what's, what's happening in our world. It actually, if you really want to know that, go over to Instagram, Sound Mind and Spirit. We, uh, we, we try to uh, have a little levity and fun with our Instagram channel. And we promise it'll be a little more upbeat than today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> but we will also share photos of our beloved grandmother. Yes, we will do that. And maybe we'll find that baseball picture. Oh, I know mom knows where it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next week. Thanks, Shelly. Bye.